Good morning, good morning. Hello, happy Wednesday. Ah, uh, let's see. Today, we are going to be working on um, more observer type stuff, more event handling in Rust. Uh, so yesterday was the traditional observer pattern or as close as like I felt that I can get with it uh, and still be rusty. Um, now I want to do, I want to do something similar, but also different, I suppose. I want to do a uh, sort of like a, an event manager. So event manager. Rs. So then we're going to run this other one instead. So I'm just going to turn you off, not even load you. Um, okay, so what do we need for this? Let, let's say we have a system. Um, I guess we're going to have a, like a run function in here. Very similar to the other one. Um, I'm not necessarily going to return anything. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to load up a couple of systems. Uh, one system is going to generate an event. Um, and then we're gonna have our our event manager which sort of like catches those events from the uh systems and then we're gonna have another system that uh does something based upon those events so i guess in in run we're gonna end up having a pub function set up so maybe instead of like just a run, let's actually just have a um, uh, do do the 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 state. Um, Cause I, I think well, I don't know. I think I think in our our run we can sort of like it's gonna mimic both. So run you need to be public. Not gonna return anything, then back in here. Alright, so let's say we have a uh we have the same sort of idea. We have the events that we care about. So let's create um let's create the events. Uh, and if I do sort of like the same idea of last time where we had like the handle input system, in fact, I could probably just clone this over here. Now we have handle input system in both. Uh, and the events that we're caring about are uh, player fired bullet, player thrusting. How is this not upper camel fix? Oh, events. That. You should be using the other. Make sure you're using the right one. Oh, because you need to be modded too. Never mind.
So I don't know if we're going to need this. Um, yeah, I don't exactly know how we want to like set this up. Uh, so I'm just gonna. All we really know is that we're gonna have a run, and we're gonna have the two events that happen. Um, there, uh, invades Rester. And the other one is their fires gun. Those are the two events that we care about. So in run, we're going to create that handle input system. Um, and then we're going to have another system that relies upon this. So if we do the same thing, it's sort of like that, that play gun sound system. Um, all right, so don't know what we're what we're storing away. Maybe I'll just do that. Uh, okay, so we have a play gun sound system. Um, let's implement default on that. Sure, debug and default. So if I want to now create this other system, Okay, so now I have our two systems here. Um, the the idea down below is that we're gonna have some kind of like run on them. So we'll probably, well, I guess we already have a run on this one. So let's just call that. Um, so that will be our handle input system run. Um, and then we want the same thing with the play gun sound system. So Now it's not doing anything right now, but we need to um, if the uh, if the fired gun event happens, then play the fired gun sound. Um, but until then, this obviously isn't going to do anything. So after the handle input system, then we're going to do the play gun sound system and unwrap you. 
you also need to be mutable. Yeah, you're just upset because you're not you being used yet. Okay, so that's that's fine. So now that we have this, we want to somehow register our events and have them be like seen by some kind of manager. I'm thinking it could be very similar to what we had before, but uh, let's go ahead and create our um, events manager. Um, okay, what are you, you can't find it? Okay, now you can. Um, okay, so we're gonna have a pub struct event. Probably should just be event manager. So what we're gonna, this is gonna be tightly coupled with the events because what we're gonna need, well, is that true? It might not be true. Um, the idea is that as we initialize each of the systems, if they're going to generate any kind of events, we need to register that with the event manager. So we probably want some kind of like constructor on all of our systems and we pass the event manager in. So it can, it can decide what it's going to do. You can decide if I'm gonna do events here. Here are the events I'm going to do, maybe? Here are the events I could possibly emit out. And then here, have a have a receiver. And I can't remember, I think it's, um, yes, yeah, so when we, when we did this way, where we get the sender, uh, a sender. Um, okay, we'll just go to the documentation. Okay, a sender can only be owned by one thread. So senders cannot be cloned. No, 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 no but it can be cloned. Receivers cannot be cloned. Only one thing can receive. Many things can send. So the events manager should probably create the senders and receivers that it needs for the events that it cares about. Um, which means there should probably be some kind of register function on here. So let's, let's imagine we're actually using this. Uh, we come into our handle input system. Uh, we need a constructor for you now. And we're going to take in the event manager. It's going to be a mutable reference to an event manager. I 
I don't know if we're returning anything. Let's just go ahead and return a result just in case. And in here, for this event manager, we need to register. We need to register that we will be sending events. I don't know if we need to register what events we're going to send. We can just say, hey, we will send an event. And that will give us a sender. So um, so we'll register with them. It doesn't matter what this is. So I think that's all I need to do. I don't actually think I need to return a result. I think we're just gonna return a self like that. Uh, then inside of here, we're gonna have a, um, so event senders. We only need a single event sender because we're only just doing this one time. Um, Dunlahi, Dunlahi, Dunlaji. Um, hello, good morning. Um, you were deemed change in music station. Sure. I'm fine with that. What should we just change to? Uh, let's see. We are currently on EDM, which is right here. can try lo-fi a lot of people like lo-fi let me know if you want something different and i will be glad to change that okay so our event sender is going to be a type of sender um and that sender is going to be for the events so then we're going to return a self that sender, uh, like that. Um, right, we can't do default anymore. That, that makes sense. Uh, so now we have new. Um, and now on event manager, we also have to have a register. Um, where did I bring the dots? Uh, which dots? I'm not sure what you mean by dots. Um, so here I'm going to need a list of the receivers. Oh, under chat. Moving down. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me let me look at my preview. Oh, those things. Yes, yes, yes. Those. Um, those are. That's a flocking simulator that we made. Uh, on we we all made here. Uh, in a previous streams. Um. So yeah, it's a flocking simulator. Uh, it's running GGEZ and um, and Rust. So if I make it, I think, do I have a big, oh, I'll show you the full version. It looks like this. And I've got it sort of like scrunched up for OBS there. Oh, thank you. I, I, I really like thought that it ended up looking pretty good too. I'm really happy with it. So that's this is the kind of stuff we do um, here. We do like lots of simulations or or games in Rust, or at least Rust for right now. But I'm I'm loving Rust, so I'm I'm sticking with it for a while. Um, okay, so let's implement Event Manager. Um, we're gonna have a pub function register. Um, 
with register we're not taking anything in but we're going to return a sender which has uh, events inside so let uh, sender receiver uh, equals get a channel Um, and this is going to be for events. Um, okay, so we know we're going to just return the sender. But we need to do something with this receiver. We need to like just have a list of them all. So um, receivers, it's going to be a receiver for events but it can't just be one. We're gonna have to have a vec of these. So then down here, um, for register, you also need immutable self. So we'll be doing self.receivers.push receiver. Um, Okay, so we can derive a debug and fault. All right, so now back to here. So handle input system, we have to do a new, um, but we also have to ha like hand in the, um, we have to hand in the, uh, the event manager. So we need to have our event. Manager is equal to event manager default. Then we'll hand in a mutable reference to the event manager. Okay, so we create the event manager. We create the handle input system and hand the uh, event manager into the handle input system. When we hand the uh, event manager into the handle input system, um, it now has a sender. It has a receiver in here. Um, Ice Coxon, hello. Uh, why do I want multiple receivers in the event manager? Good question. Um, the reason why I might want multiple receivers, uh, let's actually update this one too. So in play gun sound system, uh, I don't want to use default anymore. Up function new. Um, we're also going to take in the event manager. Don't think we're going to. Oh, we're going to return a self. So we're gonna do the exact same thing here, um, so that I can restore, I can store in the event sender. So let's say I'm gonna send a played sound event uh, out. So event sender is gonna be a sender events. We need to now register here too. And that's that's the key is we have two systems registering with event sender that they could both send events in. And that's why we need the uh, multiple receivers in event manager, one receiver for the handle input, one receiver for the play gun sound. Uh, so let um, this is the event sender equals the event manager register. Um, and then we can create self event sender.
Okay. Back to mods. We're not going to do default anymore. I'm going to go back to new uh, and hand it a mutable reference to the event manager. So at this point in time, oh, and let's uh, let's update our events to um, like maybe we can just have like a sound played event. Um, okay, so can I can I debug these? Can I debug um, the event manager? M maybe. Um, okay, so you're upset. Uh, if I run you, everything should be fine. Okay, yeah, so we have our event manager and it has the receiver, the two receivers, um, one for the handle input system and one for the play gun sound system. I would have just matched on the inbound message type, but this is probably smarter. Matched on the inbound message type, I guess. I'm trying to think like um, how I how would like when would I want to do that? I guess like the big thing is I want each thing. Uh, I don't want to have like each channel like create a channel for each event because then we're just gonna have lots of lots of lots of channels. That may not be a bad idea, but I don't know. Like I could. I can see potentially different channels for for the different events, uh, but I can also see like a single channel for all events, and then the events are just this enum. Okay, so let's now say. Um, in handle input system, we're going to have an event happen. So handle input system. Uh, the player activates the thruster for the ship when we run. So what does that mean? Um, we're going to say self dot uh, event sender. We're going to send uh, events uh, player thrusting. You return a result, so I can just question mark you. And now we have, okay, we can't do this derive anymore. Can we do a debug? Oh, derived debug. I forgot. Okay. I was missing those things. Um, okay. So this works. I'm now sending the event player thrusting out. So that should now be sitting in one of the receivers. In the events manager. We need a run too. Um, maybe this could be like handle um, handle events. So for all of these receivers, uh, we need to like now get those events. We can get them by just looping through them. So, 
So for um, event receiver in a reference to set that receivers. So we have this. Um, we can now try to get this out. We probably want to do something like just an infinite loop. Um, uh, let the event equals if let OK and equals uh, self dot no, this is going to be the event receiver dot try rec v. Turn the event, um, otherwise break. Probably not break, we want to continue because we're gonna to continue to the other receiver here. I think I was not clear, you have one channel, sender and receiver per system now. I would've had one sender per system and only one receiver in the event manager, I create receiver and sender in a new method for the event manager. You just clone the sender. Um, can I do that? I keep on going back and forth. Oh yeah, the clone, the sender can be cloned. You're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, hold on. You're right. Um, We can um, uh, let's see. We can do name rename you to event receivers So event receiver would then be a um receiver for events um event sender would be a um sender events uh we're going to want a constructor from here so we're not going to be able to do default anymore Um, let's create sender receiver create channel. Um, actually, I don't know if I need to give it the TurboFish syntax here because we're going to return a self with the, um, oh, you should both have event in front of you. Then we can do event. Uh, receiver, event sender. It's going to figure out what those types are. So if we if we do this, um, we have a single event receiver. We have a single event sender now. When we register, we don't have to create this anymore. Um, we're going to. We don't have to even do that. Uh, we're just going to. Um, I guess self dot event sender dot clone. Clone that out. Now for handle events, this becomes a little bit easier because I don't need to loop through each of these, do I? Um, for handle events now, uh, we should be able to just, well, we probably need that infinite loop still, but we don't need the for loop. So we'll have a, a loop. And the reason I'm gonna have a loop is because I could have many different events waiting in the queue for for our receiver. Yeah, I like this a lot more. Okay, I don't think I was I don't think mine was smarter. I think yours is smarter. 
Um, thank you so much for that. I wish I could like give you um, channel points or something as a reward, but Twitch doesn't let me do that. Um, okay. We're going to do the same thing now. So let, let the event equals if let a event equals self dot event uh, receiver. You probably need to be a reference. So I don't take ownership of you by accident because I can't clone you or copy you. Um, if we get this out, oh, try rec V. Try rec V, so that gives us that. Now I want to come back to events. Uh, and you're gonna need to derive, sure, debug, copy, clone. Uh, that way I can just do a dereference event that will copy out of there. Um, otherwise, uh, we can break. We're done. We have no, we have nothing more to do. Um, all right, so we now have our... We have our event here. Uh, so now we can handle that event. Um, all right, so how do we wanna handle the event? We need to determine what the event was. Actually, do we? Well, so if I want to do a pub sub where I'm subscribing to specific events, so like the the easy thing would be is now I could just send events out. It's like I could now just say self dot event sender send event. Um, All right, I'm doing a result. I can I can question mark you. I mean, we could just do this. And I think that this this works. Um But we run into a problem here with like the point of the event manager, like the the original system that we have, which is like the traditional uh observer model, um does this just fine. Like we don't need an event manager. We can just sort of directly have each of the. Oh, we could just directly have each of the um, systems observe, like register observations with each other, and that's perfectly fine. And then, but then, this way we can potentially have. Let's say the gun only wants to receive player fired events. That's why I need multiple receivers. No, I need a single receiver. I need multiple senders. So I receive like the generic, this is all events coming in as this like event receiver. And I use this to sort of like handle events. Okay, so I handle events and I get them in, but I'm not just going to like immediately send them back out. What I need to do is store these events internally in some kind of, um, do I? No, because in, oh, in register. Okay, in register, I need to take in what I want. What do I want to receive?
So this isn't register. I don't know. It's hard to send things back. I know. I know. I know exactly what you mean. So. Let's change this to publish. We're pu we're going to publish. Um. But there's also a chance that we're going to subscribe. If we subscribe, we're going to subscribe to a specific event. Um, an event is going to be a event. So we're going to tell them what event we want. So we can subscribe to multiple things. And so we're going to return a receiver for that specific event. This. So now I need to create a new uh, sender and receiver. So this is now like a specific sender and receiver. So how would I end up doing this? Um, like I, okay, so I can, I can give the, um, scribe, uh, sender, scribe, uh, receiver, create a new channel. It's going to figure out what these are, I, I believe. Um, so we're going to be able to uh, return a subscribe receiver. So that should, that should make you happy. Will each system have its own event manager? No, I don't want each system to have its own event manager. I want there to be a single event manager that all the systems can can use. So for example, what I want is our handle input system is going to publish. They're going to say, we're going to publish events. Um, we're going to publish events. So we give them a sender. And we don't care what that is. All events come in through that one sender uh, to this manager. Then we're going to have but then you cannot communicate from the event manager to systems. And then that's where the subscribe comes in. Then another system, the play gun sound system says, Hey, event manager, I want to subscribe to the fire gun event. So here's, here's our events. The player, the play gun sound system only cares about this, this event. So it needs to know when that event happens. So how do I know, how do I store this in a way that I can see that when we have this event, we then have to loop through all of the, uh, the events of like, of this one. So we're going to have to have, we're going to have to have some kind of, um, vector of, cause we're giving away the receiver. We're going to store the sender. We're going to store multiple senders now. That that's it. Like that's the only thing I can think of. Cause I can't clone the receiver. There can only be one of them. So and I can't have like one sender for multiple receivers. Yes, you're you're right, Mike's cost. And that's what this is. When you subscribe, you're gonna get a receiver for for the events that you want. So we returned this receiver and now we need to store, we need to store the sender so we don't lose it. 
um, for this specific event that we care about. But I don't think we can set the arm. Um, it feels to me that I should probably have like a hash map that, that feels to me the right. So we could have the um, subscribers. So we have a hash map and on the key side could I have events and then on the value side we're going to have a vec of this is going to be senders sender events. Um, okay, so self, um, it's going to be empty to begin with. So subscribers, it's a map, new. Then subscribe, uh, subscribe. Okay, so we have our event here. Um, Uh, let's see. What is what is the different ways we can do this? Um, let uh, the subscriber equals self dot subscribers dot. I think it's entry. It's the given keys corresponding entry in a map for in place manipulation. That's what I want because then I can do. Okay, so key is the event. Um, and then we can do so or. Or insert. Actually, it's a it's a we can just do or default. Like that. That will now give us a mutable reference to a vec of sender events. And so now I can take this subscriber and dereference subscriber. And we're gonna push in the subscribe sender. So now we subscribe, we have the subscriber inside of there. What are you upset about? No method named entry for struct hash map. Um, oh, we need. Okay, come on. You can't. Oh, oh okay, fine. Um, we need. Oh. We need equal and hash on events. Fine. Should not. Oh, we can we not? Can't do that without partial equal. Okay. Okay, back to here. Pushing you. Type cannot be dereferenced. Uh, why? That should be fine. Do I not need you? Oh yeah, I don't need you because I'm going directly into it with this auto dereference at that point because of the dot. So we can now just push into the subscriber, the subscribe sender. So now we can now we can do this. So let's head back to our mod. Um, we have to create a new one here. So we create a new events manager. Handle input system. Um, is now going to run publish that gets a sender. So it's saying I'm going to send you I'm going to publish things.
register still might be better. I don't know. Um, and so here we can say, okay, so it's going to send this event when it happens. Um, now we register, we create this play gun sound system and we hand in the events manager. Um, you're going to subscribe and well, actually, you know what you're going to let's say because um if the fire if the fired gun sound happens play the gun sound what this means to me is not only going to play the gun sound uh let's say we have an event like this this not only consumes but it sends events so what if it what if it also does self dot event sender dot send uh, events sound played. So that happens. You also like register as sender. Oh, instead of publish. I like that too. Let's, let's do that. Um, events manager publish register as sender. all the errors no register as sender register as sender um denser ick nilsson um good morning okay only warnings now so we've registered as a sender in the play gun sound. Uh, that gives us the event. And then we played, we played the sound as the event. So we send that out. Um, however, we also want to subscribe. So in our events manager, we have this. Um, we want to subscribe probably to event. So play gun sound. Um, this is going to be for a specific event here. So this is the um, gun fired event. It's going to be a receiver events. Let the gun fired event equals event manager. Um, this is now going to be subscribed to event and the event is going to be events player fired bullet that gives us this receiver and we store it away. So the gun fired event. Then in run, um, we're now going to check this. So how would we want to do this? Um, like it might, let, let's just put it all in here it, in the real code. Like when we eventually do this, we probably want to abstract this away somehow. Uh, so we're going to do let um, and fired essentially we want to guard this, don't we? Like if it's true, we fired the gun, but like let, let gun fired equals if let some, no, if let, okay, have the event equals self dot gun fired event. Try rec V. I'm doing this pattern so that I can just return this event here. But if it isn't this event, we just do an early return. So it becomes a guard. Um, gives me like it does two things for me. Um, first of all, I don't have to like now start all my code inside of this if here. 
uh, I still get to be in the same indentation. Uh, but the second thing is I don't have to like start doing lots of checks. So like, oh, well, if if the gun fired, like if this event is happening, then do this thing. Otherwise, don't do anything at all. Uh, it's just like, hey, did we get past this? Is this event happening? Then go ahead and do the thing. Perhaps if I have a more complicated uh, system, I might not be able to do that. But the goal is to make really small systems that only care about if that event happened, then do the thing. Okay, so we now know the gunfired event happened. We can trust. So hopefully we can trust that the event manager knows what it's doing and it sent the right, the right event. But okay, so the gunfired event happened. Uh, so now we can play the sound. And then once the sound played, we send out the sound played event. Um, Tigris Gra 2, hello, good morning. So obviously I'm not doing anything here, but um, we can also debug um, gunfired. And or see that this happens. Okay. So, uh, and handle input system, we are sending the player uh, thrusting. We also want to self dot event sender. Wait, you're going to hop onto your other account? Okay. I figured this was your other account because most people don't put two in theirs. Um, events. Player fired bullet. Okay. So, this one's sending two events. Um, now, obviously, like in normal life, one event or two event, but both of them could happen at the same time. I want to be able to handle that. That's the more complicated scenario. Um, OK, so then we have handle events. Uh, what are you upset about? Oh, right. I totally forgot. We could we could replace this. Um, there's a, there's a better way. It's uh, you did it yesterday for me. Yeah, while let okay events try rec v. Um, in here. So then we have our event. So okay, so we have we have this event that we care about. If the event, I guess, I want to grab the list of subscribers for these events. So uh, let subscribers equals self dot subscribers dot get um, an event already is a reference to events that should be fine. That gives us an option. Um, it's possible that we don't have anybody subscribers to it, so we really don't want to do so we need able to handle this. So this needs okay, let subscribers equals if let some subscribers uh, equals to you subscribers else I want to just uh, continue to the next event. Um, OK, so we have our list of subscribers now. Um, I want to loop through the subscribers and send the event that I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, so for subscriber in 
subscribers. Um, subscriber that send the event. Uh, you need to be dereferenced, so you copy out. Okay, so then back in mod, we run these two. Um, so this means there's always going to be a one frame lag between everything. But I don't know if there's a better way to get around this. I can run at the beginning, some arbitrary area in the middle, or at the end. So, um, event manager handle events. Um, okay, so. I want to come into our the gun sound system in run here we debug the gun the gun fired so this should only happen you should only get this one event uh, we don't at all wonderful um oh you know why you know why because we only do this once let's let's imagine a second run through here we do that again gun fired player fired bullet and we don't care about the other event whatsoever So, is this it? Did I finish? There's no warnings anymore. So, I guess, like, let's review and make sure that I've actually got everything working here. We create our, our event manager. Um, our event manager is, uh, is going to hold generic um, receiver and sender for all the events. Um, it's going to be passed into all of the systems that are created uh, so that the systems can determine when they're constructed, hey, am I going to send events? If I am possibly going to send an event, um, I want a sender. Um, and if they want to, they register as a sender and they get they get this sender. Um, however, and a system can also say, you know what? I care a lot about this specific event. So I'm going to subscribe to that specific event. And it receives a brand new receiver just for itself. Nobody else ever gets this receiver. Um, to track that, we have subscribers here, which is a hash map of the specific vector. Uh, events and a vector of these. Now, the only reason I need to do that is because I can't clone receivers. I can clone senders, but not receivers. So I would need one receiver for every single unique um, system that wants wants to subscribe to events. Okay, so it does that. We subscribe to it. We add that. Um, we add the sender for that specific sender receiver to our hash map. Uh, we give it the receiver and then we're good. So if we take a look at our handle input system, it takes in when we register, it takes in the event manager. It registers as a sender. It then stores that sender away. This never receives any events, so it doesn't care whatsoever. Um, Instead, uh, when we run here, it notices like we're playing a game. The player has the up arrow and the space bar pressed down. So it says, okay, fine. Up arrow is pressed down. Send the event that we're thrusting. 
Oh, the space bar is pressed down. Okay, also send the event that the player fired its bullet. Great, perfect. Uh, back to mod. We create the gun sound system. The gun sound system um, registers itself as a sender, but it also subscribes to the event player fired bullet. If there was another event that it wanted to subscribe to, it would need multiple receivers. So it's maybe a little bit more complicated on this side because essentially each of these receivers corresponds to a single event. Um, but this receiver is only ever going to be hit uh, or filled with something if that event is fired. Um, okay, so we then store those away and then we have our run function. So we first check to see if the fired gun event happens. So the thing that we're subscribed to, if that happens, then go ahead and play the sound. Um, and then when we play the sound, this also sends out an event. Hey, I played a sound. Now, this is a little bit contrived. I'm sort of like making this up. Um, it probably doesn't need to do that. Uh, however, I can imagine that I might want to do something like this. So like I successfully did these things and then I can essentially have a logger that subscribes to all the events or subscribes to like, yeah, subscribes to all these events so I can log out. Ooh, what happened? And it could be like a debug method. Did I play the sound? That that could be that could be interesting. Now there is going to be a lag now of one frame for everything that happens. Um, but I don't think that's too bad. If I'm working at sixty frames per second, I guess that means that your input lag is going to be at no, it's still going to be sixty frames per second, but shifted by one frame. I was um I was reading that Mortal Kombat 11. I don't know about other games, but Mortal Kombat 11, they shift the frame by seven. I I think it's seven frames. Maybe maybe as high as like 11 frames. I don't think it's much more than that. But the idea is like you put you press like the A button to like punch, and seven frames later the character starts punching. Um, and that allows them to do like, there's all sorts of things that allows them to do uh, a big part of that is networking to like give time for the other side to like sync up with it. Uh, but it feels like I'm now detaching, like uh, everything is detached from each other. Uh, if we, if we take a look at this handle input system doesn't need to know anything about the play gun system whatsoever. It doesn't even care if it exists or not. In fact, I could completely delete all the code for it and it wouldn't matter whatsoever. Um, play gun sound system doesn't know that it's handle input system that sends those events. Uh, there is some tight coupling with the event manager, but everything else is is decoupled. So with the true observation pattern, we don't even have tight coupling with the event manager. But the negative is that every system that wants to receive events will receive all the events and then has to sort of pick and choose which ones they care about uh, at runtime as opposed to at registration time. I guess I should say at update time. Um, but that this is it. It's like it was simpler than I sort of expected it to be. Um, and I'm not I'm not completely sure which way I like. Uh, like in some ways, this event manager is really nice because I could throw some extra things in here like logging, but I'm not convinced that this is the best way to do it. I'd be interested in like your thoughts.
Um, are there any other event sort of style systems that I could like possibly do? That like would be better, like clearly better. I don't know if there would be. Like we were thinking about we might have to uh, to drop into these other channel systems, but I think this event manager or just the classic observer pattern seems to seems to be fine. Something else that's really important here. Events need to reset the end of the frame. We have that because. Uh, so if I run you, let's say I run you again. We should still only get one because the event manager didn't didn't receive. Yeah, OK. I wanted to make sure that the event didn't like fire twice because that way it would be. Um, if the event fired twice, that would be meaning that it didn't leave the channel like it stayed in the channel. But as we grab it out, it's empty now. Um, the event manager, we didn't run that. So even though something else like sent the event, like another event in, we would have, yeah, we would have gotten it again, but I, wa I want to just double check that. So basically events are okay to be lost when a system looks at them using this style because each system gets their own unique receiver. Meaning that it's different than than here. Yeah, I don't know. I I like it. Um, so let's take a look at our other um, experiments that we need to do that we learned from asteroids. Uh, and I feel that we kind of kind of did this. We are. We're done. So um, next up, macros to make using the ECS library nicer. So um, there's a couple different macros that we, we need to, to, to learn to use. Macros. So um, for macros, what are requirements for this? Um, I don't think I have. Let's see. Let's go open up code and some other things. So in asteroids, um in names i'm really curious how how this works like we're using strum macros uh like two string um i don't think this actually like tells us what that is um or maybe we have to wait until stanalyzer finishes yeah you don't, you don't even know what to do String. um so I want to learn like how to do a macro that will auto turn these into like the string of its name. So I want um, macro to uh, I basically like uh, convert enum to essentially like a static stir.
because the static stirs are like what I really want to do. Um, so there's that. I don't know if there's anything else that we want in here. Oh, you know what? Maybe a macro. Macro. I don't need a macro too. This is all just macro stuff. So, um, I want a macro to, um, abstract the queries. Um, so right now our queries are pretty nasty looking. Um, but if we have a macro to like query for a bunch of different things, it can do all of that stuff behind the scenes and then just turn us like the wrapped information. Um, or like just the, the vectors of, of the data that we're looking for. It's like, it would only save like three lines, but like we do a lot of queries. So that, that would help out a lot. Um, so this is a derive query, a derive macro. Uh, this is just a, what, what is this called? It's like, it's like a code macro, but I forget, I forget all of the different, like actual true types of macros there are. Uh, it shows that I haven't, I haven't looked into macros at all. So this will be, this will be fun and exciting. Um, okay. So we have derive, we have code macros. Um, and then inside of the actual ECS library. Test macros. Um, I don't know if that's a code or if that's a different type. But. Oh, you know what? I bet I bet this is a code macro. So I bet down this is down here. Uh, this is going to be. Um, uh, generate new tests based on a different type. And then here, I guess this is also code. Like these are these are all code. Uh, we want to um, add impulse. So add impulse for um, additional types to BBCS. Yes. Great. So what I mean by that is in BBECS here. Uh, for example, we have resources. We have things like impl resource cast for sound data, um, for text, for uh, strings. Um, but the code inside is exactly the same, except maybe the error message is just subtly different. But I can imagine us like creating a macro that just does this for us. And since macros run at compile time, then then this code would exist for us. So that's what I want to do. And I, I think I think this is this is good for our our um, I guess, yeah, this is good for our uh, explorations. Um, now, I do know that like Strum has like this type of uh, uh, functionality for us. I I want to learn this myself, even if I still use Strum's uh, macros, because I don't want to use it because I don't know how to do it. I want to use it because I don't want to have to do it, if, if that makes sense. But that is going to have to uh, be next time because it is after 8.15. It's time for me to start getting ready for work. Um, and I think we've got ourselves set up for success for next time. So next time we're going to play with macros. Um, it's going to be a learning. It's going to be lots of learning here. I, uh, I don't know anything about macros right now besides just using them. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. 
um, it'll probably take longer than these uh, these observer patterns. So uh, with that, I'm going to switch over to my ending scene. Thank you, everybody, so much for stopping by. Um, if you enjoyed this and you do want to see all of this macro stuff live, then go ahead and uh, give me a follow so that you get those um, uh, notifications. Um, I'm also archiving these all up to to YouTube. So if you want to just like catch them there, uh, you can actually I think I have a link to YouTube down below. And if I don't uh, let me know and I'll, I'll well. I'll double check later. Make sure make sure I get one in there. Anyways, have a rest, a uh, great rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye. OK, I will I will add a to do item and my to do list to add that in. That'll be good. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.